Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you for who you are. We thank you because of the love you have for the world, the compassion you had on the world, the mercy you showed to the world that made you to give the best that you have for the world, even your son Jesus Christ, to die for us, that we might be redeemed from the hands of the enemy and prepared for a glorious future. Lord, by the virtue of his coming, by the virtue of his suffering, and the virtue of his death on Calvary, we are redeemed and made a better people ready for the master's use. Dear Lord, we pray that the grace to remain in your will for the rest of our lives be given unto us in Jesus' name. Lord, we have laid our hands upon the plow. We are not going back. I said we are not going back. I said we are not going back. Hold us to the end. Keep us by your power. Speak to us again now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. For quite some weeks, if you notice and you're observant, we have been on a journey. And the journey is not over yet. And we are taking a step at a time. We are having the will of God, the grace of God, the plan and the purpose of God being expanded unto us on daily basis. We talked about the need for salvation. We spoke about the need for holy living and uh, of course, by the way we do things, you have thought, I'll be talking about uh, Holy Spirit baptism, but that is not the next thing. Because before we get to that point, there is a vacuum that needs to be filled. There is a life that needs to be lived. There are situations and circumstances that you go through, which many a times the church of today don't always talk about. It's as if God is a robot. You come to God, he blesses you. He gives you bread. He gives you water. He puts butter on that bread. He makes your life glorious. And everything is great, glorious, and perfect like that. And when we are prepared like that, without any real thorough preparation of the challenges that may come on the way, of the trials and the temptations that may come our way, when those things eventually come, then it's like, God, where is your face? Is God really alive? Is, is God really able to deliver? God is able to deliver. And I will deliver somebody in Jesus' name. I'm here to let you know today that for the fact that you are born again, for the fact that you are living a holy life, does not exempt you from challenges of life. Does not exempt you from problems of life does not exempt you from trials of life. And that is why today we'll be talking about believers' life challenges. Believers' life challenges. There is need for you to know this as soon as you come to the faith that there is time for everything in life. Just as you have different seasons in life, there is morning, noon, and afternoon. There is winter time. There is summer time. There is fall. There is spring. Understand, times will come upon you as well, just as it used to be in the world. There is nothing that has changed in terms of the challenges of life between the time you were in the world and the time that you have come to the Lord. The only difference right now is that you now have the grace to carry you through. You now have the grace to see you through, and you have the grace to know how to manage the situation by the Spirit and the leading and the power of the Lord, who gives you the grace and the power to overcome and to prevail. Without Christ in your life, the situations of life, the challenges of life, the problems of life may overwhelm you and terminate your life. But with life in Christ Jesus, you are victorious. Turn to the and say, you are victorious. I say, tell to somebody, you are victorious. Yes, you are. Look at what the Bible says. Again, we are looking at believers' lives, challenges. Believers, 
not just one person, but all of us together, wants to say, you are a child of God, you are born of God. Job chapter 14, verse 1, tells us of this great man of God, who also knew the Lord, who served the Lord, who followed the Lord all his life. As a matter of fact, the life of Job, the holiness of Job, the righteousness of Job, the purity and the uprightness of Job was uncomparable, incomparable. You cannot compare it. And God, it was so holy, that life was so holy that God paid special attention to you. I declare the Lord will pay special attention to you. In the name of Jesus. And I have told you before that many of times when your life is right with God, then the enemy wants to challenge you. It, it is when you have something that is precious, something that is unique and special, that the enemy is after you. If your life is worthless, nobody is going to care about you. Nobody, no persecution is going to come your way. No opposition because you are just like any other person. But when your life is unique and special, who am I talking about? I said, who am I talking about? When your life is unique and special, then pay attention here. Heaven pays attention to you. The world pays attention to you. Don't go too far yet. The devil pays attention to you. Amen? You become a target of the enemy. The good news is, the enemy will never prevail over you. In the name of Jesus. Job, so Job tells us in the book of Job chapter 14 verse 1. He says, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Can you see that? So whether you're a believer or not, it's not the question. The point is, once you are a man, a woman, whoever you may be, born of woman, your days are limited. That's number one. No more two. There are challenges of life that will come your way. There are problems of life that will come your way. Psalm 34 verse 19 says, Though uh, that many are the afflictions, that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Can you see there? But the Lord delivered him out of them all. The Lord will deliver you from affliction. He will deliver you from trouble. He will deliver you from attacks of the enemy in Jesus' name. Now, hear me. Unbelievers have bad dreams. Believers have bad dreams. Unbelievers feel hungry. Believers feel hungry. Unbelievers get bereaved. Believers get bereaved. Unbelievers cry. Believers cry. But the word of the Lord says that when you are a righteous person, more things will happen, but those things will be to the glory of God. I said the challenges and the troubles and the crisis of your life will bring to the glory of God in Jesus' name. You know, we are told in the book of John chapter 16 verse 33 that these things, this is Jesus speaking, have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. That's why I told you three weeks ago that when you have salvation, you have peace with God. You have peace with God. When you have sanctification, you have the peace of God. And Jesus said that my peace, I live with you. You will have the peace of God. He said in the world, ye shall have what? Tribulation. But be of good share. Tell someone to be of good share. He said, be a good share. I have overcome the world. The Christian life is not without its own challenges. These challenges are not only limited to new babes in Christ alone, but also the aged people in the faith. Many saints without proper understanding of this reality have forsaken the faith and returned to the world, though still in the church. This is what I'm talking about. There are some people... You see, see them in the church. They still come to the church. We still pray together. We still sing together. We still do some things together. But in their heart, they are back into the world. They are back into Egypt. And some of them have taken a step further. They have completely left the church. I declare you will not be a victim. You will not leave the Lord. You will live the rest of your life serving him in Jesus' name. What are challenges? Challenges are situations that 
task you that drains you that confronts you mentally psychologically emotionally and spiritually this includes adversity it includes trouble that comes to humanity it includes failures bereavement disappointments trials persecution discipline life threatening sicknesses family crisis you say well because we are believers we are born again how come we are having challenges in the family well it's part of the package but you will overcome in the name of jesus have you seen some people that says they are christians and they have broken home it's part of the problems of life they get into that because they don't know how to manage it that's why we need to talk about it we don't just assume because you're a christian everything is fine it's going to be uh rosy rosy all the time no it doesn't always happen that way there are times that challenges will come your way there are times of lack that you need some money and the money is not there there will be times of limitations in your life there will be times of examinations there will be times of peer pressure and then there will be times in your life that you'll be in between yoking together with the world and abiding in the faith that you have to make a decision for yourself where to be especially the young people today the students the youth that they go to school they go to colleges and why they are here in the church why they are here with us everything looks okay and you say this is a promising boy this is a promising girl and then they are coming and all of a sudden they found themselves in that institution only to realize that they are now being exposed to the kind of danger and the challenges and the trials and oppositions and the troubles of life that they were not prepared for. The Lord will keep our children. The Lord will preserve our children. The Lord will deliver them in Jesus' name. Because once they get there, the first thing that hit them is identity crisis. Where do I belong? Where do I belong? All the church members that have been there for me, where are they? My mommy, my dad that used to pray for me, where are they? And then all the other youth that were together, where are they? And then what do I do now? Can I stand alone? Can I be by myself? Or should I join these people and be part of what they are doing? And then they find some people that says they are Christians also. But then you know that their Christianity is which you or she. You know that their Christianity does not have genuine encounter with the Lord. They say they are Christians, they still steal. They are Christians, they still tell lies. They are Christians and they sing in their churches. And they have activities in their churches. But they still have boyfriend and girlfriend. And uh, when you don't know what you stand for, when you don't know what you believe, then you say, well, after all, they are all children of God. No, they are not all children of God. God knows his children. And the children of God knows their parents. The Lord will make you a real child of God in Jesus' name. So the challenge of inclusiveness is there. They want to find out where they really begin. But listen to this. Joseph found himself in that situation in Egypt. He overcame. You will overcome. I said our youth, our children will overcome in Jesus' name. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they found themselves in that situation in a foreign land without father, without mother, without teacher, without instructor, but the seed that was planted in them was germinating. I declare that in the name of the Lord, the seed of God in the life of our children will continue to germinate in Jesus' name. The enemy will not prevail over them. The world will not snatch them away from us. The Lord will preserve and perfect them in Jesus' name. Psalm 34 verse 19. We read it before. I just want you to hear again. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him out of them all. Out of how many? All. All 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 so understand please if you say you're a christian you're a child of god and there is nothing you are fighting for you know the bible says contend earnestly that is jude verse 3 
chapter 1 verse 3 it has only one book of the bible anyway it says contend earnestly for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints contend earnestly many people today are contending for nothing there is nothing they are contending for christianity as usual life as usual religion as usual fellowship as usual there is nothing they are standing for there is nothing they are contending for there is nothing that the world is seen in them that is opposed to the world love not the world then that the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers that's what the word of the lord says you know many churches they don't tell you all this because they want membership you know what we want membership that i have already we want membership that are God fearing. Of what use will it be for us to get us together? And at the end of the day, why they say somebody died and anybody can die? The pastor can die, the member can die, a young person can die, old people can die, and then we are singing that you have gone to heaven only to realize that the demons are the ones that have weak the person to have fire. You will not end up in hell fire. I say you will not end up in hellfire. You will not end up in hellfire. The Lord will keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Challenges come in different and diverse ways. Some of the challenges of life are sometimes orchestrated by the devil so as to overthrow our faith, the believers. Some other times, believers give room for the devil through carelessness. They give room to the devil through ignorance. They give room to the devil through impatience, through carnality, through youthful exuberances in the case of our young people. And then some of us is unguided freedom. Everybody wants freedom. But please understand that freedom has a price. Freedom is not free. Freedom is not free. There is a price for freedom. And understand, yes, there are blessings of God, there are promises of God for every believer, yet there are conditions for getting those promises. If you are going to be a true child of God, don't just be deceived by the world. Come to the word of God and the Lord will keep you in his word in Jesus' name. There are some that bring these challenges and troubles upon the life because of disobedience and rebellion. I know the Bible makes us to know that rebellion is that the weeds, the sin of witchcraft, and then uh, negative peer pressure, and then some people outright sin, outright sin. Understand? Whosoever that committed sin is of the devil. Whosoever that is born of God does not commit sin. You had it earlier this morning such the scriptures uh, session when the pastor moderating question and answer time also came up there are some that will tell you that once you're born again you're born again once you're born again you're born again it's a lie what did i say it's a lie let me tell you what they are telling you they said i'm paraphrasing what they are saying interpreting what they are saying that you were a thief and then you were caught stealing and then you were taken to the law courts and you were judged and sentenced to jail five years and then you served your time in jail and then you came out of jail for the fact that you went to jail for stealing does it mean if you kill somebody thereafter you are not a criminal again does it mean you are not more a criminal you are still a criminal. What will happen to you again? You go back to jail. But these liars and deceivers that are looking for money and membership, they tell us once you are saved, you are forever saved. It doesn't matter what you do after your salvation. Whether you steal again, you are still saved. Whether you commit immorality, you are still saved. Whether you are immoral, you are still saved. Whether you are rebellious, you are still saved. It's a lie. I told you two weeks ago that salvation is the open door. Access into the family life of God. Holiness is what keeps you within a family. If after that salvation, you go out again. You see, you, you came into this building. 
got the entrance you got to the entrance you were allowed in you came in and then you got here you look around i don't like it here what do you do you go back outside but when you look around i like it here then if you like it here there are rules and regulations here there are conditions here for you to follow i'm just telling you linking that with the kingdom of god when you get born again all your old sins are forgiven somebody say amen to that your future sin are not forgiven because god expects you to now begin to live in a newness of life in, a, in righteousness and purity and holiness therefore if any man if any woman if any child if any boy if any girl be in christ he is a new creature old things a pass away and look at that boy look at that woman look at that man he says behold all things are become new your life will be new Amen. your language will be new your attitude will be new your character will be new everything now being orchestrated by the spirit and the power of the lord that is how to be prepared for heaven listen once you close your eyes and dead nobody will stand for you father mother brother sister husband wife nobody will stand for you you will be on your own be prepared for eternity i look at three points number one the most of believers challenges the most of believers challenges point number two the motive behind common challenges the motive behind common challenges i use the word common because it is everybody whether you're a preacher or you're a pew member everybody goes through challenges in life and finally maturity in managing challenges maturity in managing challenges come back to the first point the most of believers challenges it is something that will happen to everybody isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 this is god speaking it says when thou passest through the water when 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 if that tells us is something that is definitely going to happen when it's not if thou pass it no if is conditional but it says when thou pass it through the water the waters of trouble the waters of problem the waters of affliction the waters of infirmity the waters of opposition the waters of oppression when thou pass it through the water i will be with you god will be with somebody and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire thou shall not be born neither shall the flame kindle upon thee i need an amen, amen. the lord they say this is a bound to happen bound to happen bound to happen it is your attitude to whatsoever is happening to you that will determine your end you know i was sharing with the seniors uh, when was it that uh, they went on their field trip and i said that uh, former president jimmy Carter was diagnosed with cancer and the man had a positive attitude and uh, before you know it within months they checked him again cancer was gone but then there is another person whose name i'm not going to mention because this is going into the air another person known politician also was diagnosed with cancer and he had a negative attitude do you know that person is now buried it tells somebody it is your attitude that will determine what your result will be amen as for whether there be persecution or position it will surely come but the lord will give you victory over it in jesus name amen john chapter 16 again these things have i spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good share i said be of good share I said be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fairy trial which is to come to you. As though some strange things happen to you, but rejoice. Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, 
that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. He is glorified. And then the Apostle Paul trying to really prepare us for the battle ahead. You know, he, he tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, he said, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Tell me now, somebody help me here. Against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness where? In high places. So understand that as believers, the battle must come. The battle will come. And then before Paul finished, he said in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 4, uh, sorry, verse 12, he said, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer. Some of you didn't know the passage. Shall suffer persecution shall suffer persecution. I told you what we read in Isaiah chapter 43. The Bible says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And when you walk through the fire, thou shall not be burned. That is God speaking there. God is saying, it will come. And God is not a liar. It will come. And then Jesus Christ also tell us very clearly that in this world we will have tribulation. Only in him that we will have peace and joy. It will come your way in Jesus name. The Holy Spirit also confirm the exact the same thing. So understand that every believer on their journey to heaven must be expected to encounter challenges of life, problems of life, but in it and through it, the Lord will give us victory in Jesus' name. Understand, if anybody is promising you a Christian life free of trouble, that person is a liar. That person is not speaking for God. That person is not speaking by the Spirit of the Lord. Nobody ever promised any Christian a battle-free life. No wonder. The book of Revelation tells us, he that overcometh, he that overcometh, he, look at it, Revelation chapter 2, verse 26 says, he that overcometh. The same thing, chapter 3, verse 5, he that overcometh. Chapter 12, verse 21, he that overcometh. Somebody here will overcome. Yeah. I said somebody here will overcome. In the name of Jesus. And so, there are catalogs of people. The apostles overcame. They had their challenges. I told you, Joseph was a young man, a teenager when he went to, into Egypt. He overcame. He will overcome. Our teenagers will overcome. Our young adults will overcome. Our children will overcome. Esther was a lady. And she shunned the palace. Esther overcame the peer pressure. All our ladies will overcome in Jesus' name. Daniel overcame. Our young people will overcome again. You know, whether at young age or old age, Daniel was confronted with these challenges, and at every point in time, he overcame. Listen to this. The devil never give up. And you will not give up. You will not give up trusting the Lord. In the name of Jesus. You see, there is a lady that is called uh, Helen Keller. Helen Keller. And uh, if you know about Helen Keller, Helen Keller was a lady that became blind at about the age of two years old. But she got to know the Lord. She lived for God. She served the Lord. And uh, eventually, she ensured that her physical impairment never interfered with her commitment unto God. She became a, prol a prolific writer. And uh, if you go to New York, there is Helen Keller's School of Music for the Blind over there at New York. I've been there before. And uh, let not your situation 
deter you from serving the Lord. Now, I think I told you this story before. I will tell you again because uh, some of you have not heard it. Are you ready for my story? Are you ready for the story? Tell your neighbor first, don't give up. Tell your neighbor, don't lose hope. There is hope for you. You know, there was this lady that had hunchback. You know what they call hunchback? Amen. And when there is hunchback, you see the front is also somehow. And the, this lady got to know the Lord. She gave her life to Christ. And you know, when you are that kind of a person, you are very popular. You know what I'm talking about. Everybody will know you. Even those who don't know your name, what they'll give you their own name. What name will they give you? The lady with hunch. Ah, thank you so much. Somebody is helping me with the preaching over there. God bless you. The lady with the hunchback. But the lady never mind. Tell somebody, never mind. Tell somebody, never mind. Because your miracle is on the way. I say your miracle is on the way. You know, many at times, the problem you are going through is what people will describe you with. You know, the uh, Bartimaeus, the parents name him Bartimaeus, but people, will, people call him what? Blind Bartimaeus. Now, the woman with the issue of blood, we don't know her name, but what is the name people gave her? Woman with the issue of blood. Any name that is not given by heaven, God will remove in Jesus' name. Every name of blemish, every name of shame, the Lord will take away from you in Jesus' name. Somebody's situation is about to turn around. I said somebody's situation is about to turn around and it will happen to you in Jesus' name. You know, Abraham Lincoln, you must have heard about him. One of the former presidents of the United States. You know, his own labored name was a failure. A failure. Don't worry, that is what man is saying. What is God saying concerning you? You are a success story. In the name of Jesus. You know that man failed in business a number of times. And then he got into politics. If business will not work, politics will work. He got into politics the first time he failed. The second time he failed. The third time he failed. The fourth time he failed. I think it was after the eighth time he now contested for presidency and he won. Somebody here is going to win. I said somebody here is going to win. And the Lord will make you to be a winner indeed in Jesus' name. I get to my second point, motive behind common challenges. What is the motive? Understand, the devil wants to derail you. The devil wants to deceive you. The devil wants to destroy you. But pay attention also. I feel for people that always put everything on the devil, the devil, the devil. It may not even be the devil. How about if it is God? Amen? You know, God spoke to the children of Israel. I allowed this to happen to try you. To see the state of your mind. And so, don't jump to conclusion that it's the devil. Ask yourself, what is the will of God for me in this situation? What is the plan of God for me in this situation? But when you so magnify the devil to the point that you forget about God, discouragement and despair will come in. And you will be displaced in life and in ministry. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will preserve you. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 tells us, and we know, somebody say we know. Somebody say we know. Say it as if you mean it. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are they called according to his purpose. So, never mind, whatever the purpose, the root cause of the trial, of the challenge, of the tribulation may be, the Lord is wanting me to tell you that the end will be glorious. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 and 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 and 3. The Bible says, And thou shalt remember, remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. The number 40 stands for testing. 
The number 40 stands for trial. It stands for temptation. And then the Bible says, Thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee. Can you see it there? The Bible says, The Lord led them that way to do what? To humble all, to humble them. Maybe you are proud and God wants to humble you and to prove you. Maybe everybody thinks you are okay, but internally you are not okay. And God wants to prove you to know what was in thy heart. Let me just read through. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee. And to prove thee, to know what was in thy heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandment or no. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. Doth man live? Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee? This is verse 16 I'm reading now. That he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. Tell to someone and say, Your end will be glorious. All right, tell somebody, My end will be glorious. And the Lord will make it glorious in Jesus' name. Some of the challenges that people face in life includes the challenges of persecution. When I use the word persecution, I'm talking about harassment, maltreatment, oppression, torture, and then the challenges of opposition, antagonism, hostility, disagreement, disapproval, destruction. Not only that, there is challenge or challenges of false brethren within the fold. You come to the church. There are some people that are not real. And then, as a new believer, or maybe as, a, as an old believer too, sometimes we get confused. You see some people, you think they're fine, and yet they are fake. You will be real. Amen. Then, we are confronted with the challenges of compromise. When you see people, they're supposed to be leaders in the faith. They have been around for some time. They're supposed to be model of godliness and of righteousness. Model of peace and of the fear of the Lord. And yet, you begin to see worldliness in them. You are confused. Especially if you're a new believer. You wonder, what is going on? But then, whether you're a new believer or not, everybody is confronted with the temptation to go worldly, the allurement of worldly music, the traditions of the elders, traditions. And sometimes we don't even know the difference between the traditions of the church and the doctrines of the Bible. And we mix them up together. And we hold the traditions as if they're the doctrines of the Bible. Pay attention Traditions and cultures are things that can change with time. The doctrine of the Bible stands forever. Forever, O oh Lord, thy world is settled in heaven. It is settled in heaven. Heaven and earth may pass away, but not a judge or teaching of the world will pass unfulfilled. So, understand the difference between tradition and the doctrines of the Bible. And we have these challenges. You have the challenges of conformity with the world. And I told you, love not the world. Neither the things that I do in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And then you see, and uh, there are people, they want to do naming ceremony. And then, what they do is, they go copy from the world. And they bring the world into the church. No, that will not be acceptable. They want to do their wedding, and then they go imitate the things of the world. How about graduation? How about uh, other anniversaries that people do? How about birthday? Birthday. And they do all these things, and you see worldliness, and you see ungodliness, and uh, these things on their own may not be seen, but the way that people go about them,
them is what may make it simple. You as a child of God, if you want to do anything, ask yourself, who am I glorifying? Who am I honoring? Am I honoring God? I'm honoring myself. Am I honoring God? I am uh, following the dictates of the world and of the society and the leading of the understand, understand every human being is under the control of one out of two spirits. Is either the spirit of God is controlling you or the spirit of the devil is controlling you. Understand, you can be in between, you can be neutral. It's either you're under the influence and the control of the spirit of God or the spirit of the world. Look at all the fashions of the world. Don't you see all the models of the world and all these uh, other people when the devil inspired them with all those things that makes them to look like uh, animals? Uh, they come, they parade themselves on TV with whatever spirit, familiar spirit in them, and before you know it, everybody is grabbing it, grabbing it. And unfortunately, people in the church that claims to be serving the Lord, they don't understand that they must be influenced and controlled by the spirit of the Lord and not the spirit of this age. The Lord will keep you. I said the Lord will keep you. You know, we were told earlier this morning from Titus chapter 2 verse 11 that the, 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 the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto how many people? All men teaching us that deny ungodliness and Say it, I want to hear it. Worldly loss, worldly loss, worldly loss. If you're a true child of God, it's part of the challenges you are going to face. The temptation will be there, the trial will be there to want to be like them, to want to feel belong, and that you are going to say to your body, No, you are going to say to the devil, No, you are going to say to the society, No, you're going to say, Others oh, may, and what are you saying? I cannot. Others may dress anyhow. Others may dress like prostitutes. Others may talk anyhow. Others may, may go to film houses and watch some pornography. Others may watch some things on the internet. Others may watch some things on the television that does not glorify the name of the Lord. Others may. Others may. Others may tell lies. Others may steal. Others may have boyfriend or girlfriend. As for me, I am a child of God. I cannot. And you will not. I said you will not. In the name of the Lord, you will not. You will stand for the truth and for righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then there are challenges of false prophets. False prophets are all everywhere right now. They are there and in fact some of them are now pentecolizing themselves. Uh, did I say that right? Pentecostalizing. The, I'm trying to come up with a, a grammar. You know, I always come up with my own grammar. Pentecost, Pentecostal, Pentecostalizing. I need an amen there. Yeah. Add that to your dictionary. And they call the name of the Lord. And they see prophecy for you. And they see vision for you. And then they take the place of God in your life. They know that you don't know what you are doing understand understand when jesus died the veil of the temple was right into two giving us access to the holy of holies so that we need no more intermediary between us and our god you can call upon god yourself i say you can call upon god yourself do i tell you this you need no prophet to pray for you if you're a true child of god Listen to this. If you're a true child of God, who is that prophet praying to? If you're a child of God, who are you supposed to pray to? Who is going to answer both of you? So, if your life is right with God, if my life is right with God, then nothing will hinder my prayer from being answered. I need an amen there. Nothing will hinder your prayer from being answered in Jesus' name. And so, some of you that any little thing, you are looking for people, lay hands on me, lay hands on me, lay hands. Please understand, I'm not saying that is wrong, but be careful of who is laying hands on you. Because some people, demonic hands have been laid on them. They were having leg problem before, now they have given you head problem. Now they have added stomach ache unto each. You went with one trouble, you are coming back with five troubles. The Lord will deliver you. They we are false prophets, and some of them will teach you erroneous things. Erroneous things. 
erroneous things to make you feel comfortable, to make you continue in your sinful life. Run away from them. Some of them will tell you your father is the wizard. Your mother is the witch. And then your family member, they are this and that. Pay attention here. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. I need an amen there. I need a better amen there. Why should the spirit in them be greater than the spirit in me? When the Bible says that I have the power to cast them out, why should I run from them? If I'm running from them, something is wrong with me. It's either that I don't know who I am, and I told you before, if you know who you are, you will know what you have, and if you know what you have, you know what you can do with what you have. I have Jesus in me. I said I have Jesus in me. And the Bible says that at the mention of the name of Jesus, I can hear somebody, I can hear somebody, every knee shall bow. That wizard will bow. That demon will bow. That principality will bow. That devil will bow. Who are they? If God be with you, if God be with you, who can be against you? I said who can be against you. Hey, stop running away. It's enough of fear in your life. Stand for God. Stand with God. The enemy will try, but you say, no, no room for you, for, for, for you here, get out of here. Resist the devil, and the Bible says he will do what? He will flee from you in Jesus' name. And then you have the challenge of daily supply. What shall we eat? And what shall we drink? Understand, the Bible says, for my God. I can hear somebody here. I need someone to help me here. It says, For my God shall supply all my need. I said, All my need. I said, All my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If he could provide for the sparrows, I am more valuable than the sparrows. I said, I am more valuable than the sparrows. He will take care of you. Tell somebody, he will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through all the way, all the way, he will take care of you. God will take care. He will take care of you. I don't care what your situation may be right now. He will take care of you. Lean on him. Trust in him. Depend on him. He never fails. He will never fail you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, let me quickly mention this. I have quite a lot of things. I'm not sure I'll be able to get through to all of them. Then there is this challenge of deliverance without holiness. And there are a lot of prophets out there. They call themselves deliverance minister. Deliverance minister. Do I tell you this? Some of those deliverance ministers need deliverance themselves. Somebody say amen. They need what? Deliverance. If you make your life right with God, then you will see that you can even deliver them. And then you go to them, instead of them letting you know that once your life is right with God, you can take care of all these things by yourself. Understand, there are some baggages we came from, from our old life. You understand? Get me right. And they came with you to the Christian down. And yes, you are saved. Salvation takes away your sin. All those baggages are still there. Now that you are a child of God, you now have the power. Somebody say power. Jesus said, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. This is the difference. 
you know, you say, Pastor, the way he's preaching is like he doesn't want to be praying for people. Who told you that? You come and we pray for you. Amen? If you are not there yet, I understand, but I'm saying, grow in grace. That's what I'm, grow in grace. You don't have to be running, whether you're in deeper life or outside of deeper life, stop running everywhere. Amen? If you're a child of God, your pastor is going to call upon God. If you're a child of God, you call upon that same God. Do you still love me? You want me to continue? Or I should open a prayer room for everybody to be coming every day? Praise the Lord. The next time you come for prayer, I will make you to pray for people. Amen. Praise God. You know, sometimes ago, some years back, we had the, the, the first men's retreat we had in this church. And then we had it in one hotel, uh, Homewood Suite, in somewhere in Virginia. And the, the first night, we were just to pray and minister. But I felt led by the Lord that we should just pray that night. And um, to cut a long story short, we were praying and praying and praying. And all of a sudden, I stopped and I said, well, the Lord is saying something again. Uh, there are many of you here that are not yet filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord wants to visit you. Just like God wants to visit somebody here today. In the name of Jesus. And I say, those of you that are baptized in the Holy Ghost, stand up, and then very, very few. And the majority of the people, more than three quarters, were not filled with the Holy Ghost. And I know the way God leads me. And this is something I never did before. And I never even saw it done before. But this is what the Lord is saying, do. And so, I said, those of you that are filled with the Holy Ghost, come around here. And then, I pray for them. And I said, uh, those of you now that I pray for, and they never did that, I said, you people, this other people begin to pray for them. Praise the Lord. And some of the people are here. And uh, that was a day like no other day. And these people that never, never pray for anybody to be filled, they were praying, and people were being filled with the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Holy Ghost. But this is where I am going. Somebody can be used of the Lord. There is a brother here, he's hearing me as I'm talking right now. He got filled that very day. He was so saturated in it, and the next thing I saw is, he got up after that and began to pray for people himself. Amen. I said, God will use somebody here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so, instead of you running heta scatter, make yourself a vessel of honor in the hand of the Lord. And the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. If you need deliverance, there is no deliverance without holiness. That's where I'm going. There is no deliverance without righteousness. What brought the problem into your life originally is sin. What will keep the trouble out of your life is righteousness. So, if anybody pray for you, no matter the manifestation, many people, it's just when they see the manifestation, they say, yeah, it's gone, it's gone. It's gone nowhere. And then some people, they lay hands on you, you fall down. If there is no righteousness, the way you went down is the same way you will get up. Are you listening to me? But, when there is righteousness, when there is holiness, when there is purity, the Bible says, the righteous shall be as bold as lion. Then you can decree a thing. And the Bible says, it shall be established unto you. You knew there are problems in your life, baggages you came with from your old life, call it generational cause, call it family cause, call it anything, whatsoever, you take authority. Somebody say, take authority. Somebody said, take authority. Somebody said, take authority. And then it shall be established unto you in Jesus' name. Who is the devil in the presence of Jesus? What is the power of darkness in the light of the glory of the living God? And then you make yourself a victim. And then they are passing you around. Passing you around. Enough is enough. Somebody here will be victorious. I said somebody will be victorious in the name of Jesus. You know, if you will believe what I'm telling you, all those prophets who have been giving your money to, they will, they will go broke. You hear what I said? They will go broke. And some of you, you are sending money to them even in another country. Another country. You know, one day, a brother in the church came to me and said, uh, 
Pastor, I'm in trouble. I said, what? A child of God cannot be in trouble. Ah, he said, Pastor, this one I'm in trouble. Oh. I said, tell me what is it? He said, I was watching television. And then he mentioned the name of the pastor. I don't remember now. And uh, they said so many things. He has been watching the man, watching the man. And then he said, send your prayer request. And then he sent the prayer request to them. And then they responded back to him. They sent him a letter. And in that letter, I read it myself. Part of it was written with black ink. Part was written with red ink. Part was written with blue ink. And then they told me, this letter, Pentecostal, keep it under your pillow. And then they told him other things he was going to do. And they said, within this number of days, you will send this amount of money to them. If you don't send the amount of money, then they put a cost there. <laughs> when I saw that, I said, ah, now I understand you are in trouble. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, do you believe in Jesus? Pastor, I believe. If you believe, why don't you believe us before? You were running after tele evangelists. To cut a long story short, I collected the letter from him. Amen? Because there is power in the name of Jesus. I said there is power in the name of Jesus. I got the letter from him. Oh, I forgot. They sent him some other things, uh, oil, salt, and some other things. I got everything from him. And then I said, follow me. I called some, uh, maybe about three brothers. I said, you follow me. And then we got to the parking lot of the church. I said, get me a very nice uh, gas. Amen. And then I put those things down. I called the name of the Lord Jesus. I put this in a, put those things upon it. And then I put fire. Somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. And then the number of days they gave him came and passed. Because they said within these days, this will happen, that will happen. And then I waited for more than one month. I said, brother, are you still here? You are still alive? You will live. You will live. You will live. You will not die in Jesus' name. They are liars. They are not of God. And some of them are walking by familiar spirits. So be careful. That's why And when you come to a church like this, understand I'm not saying we are the only church in town. There are other churches, but when you come to a church like this, and we are telling you the truth, you don't believe us because you want quick action. You want quick action. You will get quick trouble. But God will deliver you. Amen. Just follow the process. It doesn't cost you any money. Are you with me? Salvation is free. Deliverance is free. Promotion is free. Whatever you need from the Lord, you can ask the Lord and he will do for you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. But the enemy's motive is to derail you. But you will not fail. You will not fall. You will not stumble in the name of Jesus. When challenges of life come, it helps us to choose the right way. The prodigal son went astray, but he learned, he returned. Um, David said in the book of Psalm 119, verse 67, he said, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Some of you have gone astray, and God is trying to use those challenges to bring you back. When the shepherd sees that the sheep is going astray, the shepherd used the, the rod uh, to just redirect them. Redirect them. Sometimes, when the sheep is not listening, what does the shepherd do with the rod? He uses the rod to tackle. Come back here, and then the sheep will come back. You will come back home. In the name of Jesus, challenges help us to know our strengths and weaknesses. Strengths and weaknesses. And then it helps us to, it helps to direct our attention to God. To direct our attention to God, challenges of life strengthens us, establishes us matures and perfects us that's why uh, Peter said in first Peter chapter 5 verse 10 but God but the God of all grace who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after ye have suffered a while make you perfect established strengthened and set you he will set you 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We read it earlier on that sometimes those things help us to become humble. Humble. Humble in different and diverse ways. And that now gets us to the final point. Maturity in managing challenges. Maturity in managing challenges. Time will not permit us to read from the book of Job. But you know the story. All that Job suffered in the hands of the enemy and at the end of the day Job prevailed. You will prevail. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10 says now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he did before time. Let nothing take your prayer life. Let nothing take your fellowship away from you. Paul said, who shall separate us? What shall separate us from the love of God? It is your attitude to what is happening that will determine what is going to happen to you. The world is not a playground. Please understand. It's a battlefield. Whether you're a believer or not, the battle is raging. As a believer, you will overcome. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, how can you, with maturity, deal with the challenges of life? One. You re-examine your relationship with God. Re-examine your relationship with God. When things are happening, how am I doing? Somebody say, how, how am I doing? Don't ask somebody, how are you doing? You ask yourself, how am I doing? Spiritually, how am I doing? It says, examine yourself. Whether ye be in that faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own sex, except ye be reprobates. That's the word of God. And if you notice anything is wrong, you repent right away. And then, if there is need for restitution, you do your, your, your restitution immediately. Immediately. Amen? Then, you realize that you are not alone in your challenge. God is there with you in Jesus' name. Number three, you refrain from all idle talk. Refrain from murmuring and complaining. That's what got the children of Israel into trouble. They didn't know God was trying them. And they were falling more and more into the dish. Remain in fellowship. Some people, because of problems, they will say, nobody care for me. And then they will get out of fellowship. The Bible says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together as the manner of some is. Receive more of God's grace to live an overcoming life. Receive more of God's grace to live an overcoming life, reject the feeling of despair and despondency. That's where maturity comes in. And you say to yourself, God understands. God understands. And then God, you say to yourself, God is in control. Release yourself then, if you know it's in control, release yourself to the hands of the Lord and he will take care of you. I said it will take care of you. I said it will take care of you. I round up with Isaiah chapter 40. Open your Bible there. To the book of Isaiah chapter 40. I look at it from verses 28 to 30. Shall we rise on our feet? I want us to rise as we read this together. We are going to read together. Isaiah chapter 40. Chapter 40 verse 28. If you are there, say amen. It says, one, two, go. Everybody, has thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Close your Bible and begin to talk to the Lord. That in the name of Jesus, you will not be weary in the Christian journey. You will not faint. You will stand for the Lord. You will live for the Lord. You will glorify God in your life. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord will keep you to the end. Trials of life will come. Temptations will come. Challenges will come. But you will stand. You will stand. You will stand. By the grace of God. If you are not yet born again, this is your opportunity. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the glory of God. The glory of God. Young people can be saved. Old people can be saved. And uh, when you are saved, you become a child of God. You become a giant in the faith. You become a hero of faith. Tell the Lord to hold your hand. To keep you. To preserve you. To prosper you. To perfect you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world but lose his own soul? Understand, brothers and sisters, how long you have been in the church is not the matter. Anybody can be in the church, anybody can be a worker in the church, anybody can be a leader in the church, but without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no much I see the Lord. When challenges of life come, when trials of life come, when temptation comes, uh, the grace to prevail, the grace to overcome, tell the Lord to give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you are there, you are bearing somebody else's name. You are using somebody else's social security. You are into wrong marriage. Whatever it may be that is wrong in your life, repent of it right now. Renounce it right now. Call upon the name of the Lord and the Lord will keep you. The Lord will save you. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will prosper you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's not all about traditions of the world. It's not about the traditions of the church. It's not about the traditions of our time. It's about the will of God. It's about the word of God. It's about the way of God. So that you can see the wonders of God in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you have gone astray, come back home. Come home, come home. The Lord is calling you back home. Come home to the will of God. Come, way, home, come home to the ways of the Lord. Come home unto holiness and righteousness. Come home unto purity and uprightness. This is the will of God for you. This is the will of God for you. Say to yourself, I will stand to the end. Say to yourself, I will finish well. Say to yourself, I will finish strong. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord will keep you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will prosper you. The Lord will perfect you. In the name of Jesus. If there is any problem in your life, you can get solution today. You can get solution today. You can get solution today. And solution is coming your way. If there is any sickness in your body, make right your way with the Lord. Because in a minute I'm going to be praying for people. Make right your way before the Lord. Make right your way, your life before the Lord. And then every impediment to answer to your prayer will be taken away. Because God is visiting somebody today. God is touching somebody today. God is healing somebody today. God is delivering somebody today. Don't worry about that challenge of your life. God is turning your situation around. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus name we pray. And in the bitter amen. 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 All eyes closed. All eyes closed. I don't want anyone to live here without the touch of God. But one thing will stand on your way. That is iniquity. Transgression. Pride. Worldliness. You're going to say, Lord, here am I. You know, you tell lies. Forget about when you say you got born again. That one is a story. How is your life right now? If death should come now, will you make it to heaven? You are here today. And you say, I am reconciling my way with God. Reconciling my way with God. I'm beginning afresh with God. If you just raise up your hand where you are, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it up. Keep it up. Yes, those of you, our time is gone, so I'm going to make it quick. Those of you with your hands up, please lay those hands upon your chest. Lay it upon your chest. 
Lay it upon your shares and quietly say, Lord Jesus. Don't, don't even let your next person hear you. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today with attitude of gratitude, appreciating you for keeping and preserving my life. That I am alive today to make right my ways before you. I yield my life unto you. I repent of all the wrongs that I have ever done because of your son Jesus who died for me. I pray you forgive me. I pray you forgive me. I pray you forgive me. And I declare I receive your forgiveness in the name of Jesus. I promise by your grace from today I will live for you. In Jesus name. Amen. Keep your hand like that. I want to pray for you. Father, I hand over all this, your children unto you, the men, the women, and all these young people, Lord, that are saying, it is me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, my sister, my father, mom, my mother, but me. Dear Lord, look down from heaven and honor their feet in Jesus' name. Nature of sin, life of sin, conduct of sin, attitude of sin, behavior of sin. You are all the messengers of the devil. I come against you as a servant of the Lord. And I command right now, pack your load. Get out of their lives in Jesus' name. The grace to live for you for the rest of their life. Give unto them. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're here today, I tell you, our God is able. He's able to meet all your need. Take care of all your problems. Whatsoever the baggage you brought from your life before, even those of you that are just giving your life to Christ now, whatsoever baggage brought you up to this point, those baggages have been dropped at the feet of the cross. In the name of Jesus. If you have been with sicknesses or infirmity before now, I am telling you, our God is a great healer. He can bring about healing in Jesus' name. A failure and disappointment has been the story of your life by the power of the Lord. Testimony is coming to your mouth. In the name of Jesus. Whatever your own need may be, it is time. Your time has come. Raise up your hand. You need a touch of God, special prayer for a specific thing in your life. I want to pray for people in that category right now. Just raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you as your servant and representative. You say, whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever I lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I bring before you all these children of yours with their hands up. Whatever that problem may be, that affliction may be, that oppression may be, that torment may be, that infirmity may be, whatever that yoke may be, whatever that uh, uh, that cause may be in their life, I come against them right now. I command in the name of Jesus, Satan, pack your load, get out of their lives in Jesus' name. I decree that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every feeble hand be made whole. Every feeble soul be made whole right now in Jesus' name. Every failure and disappointment, affliction and torment that has followed them till this very day. You will tell the children of Israel, the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. I pray these ones will see their trouble no more. We we'll see the crisis no more. We we'll see the oppression no more. We we'll see the infirmity no more. In the name of Jesus, every satanic deposit in their body, in the form of sickness, in whatever part of the body, in the head, in the eyes, in the ears, in the nose, in the stomach, in the in, in the heart area, in the kidney, in the liver, wherever it may be, hear me, sickness, hear me, infirmity, pack your load. Get out now in Jesus' name. I pray that the hands of the Lord will be upon the people of the Lord. The grace of the Lord be multiplied unto them. And the joy of the Lord will fill them up in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name we pray.